person you just saw floating is actually an aerospace engineer. So why don't we go ahead and interview her to find out about the aerospace engineering career through the eyes of one of the coolest people I know. First off, my name is Alexandra and I'm a mechanical engineer working on space vehicles. And I would like to welcome all of you to the Seminist Network. If you find this video helpful, please like this video and subscribe to the Seminist Network. So let's get right to it, but make sure to watch to the end of the video if you want some great advice on becoming an aerospace engineer from Natalie. Okay, hi Natalie, we're so excited to have you here with us today. Hey Alexandra, thank you so much for having me here at the Seminist Network. Uh, I can't wait to share my experiences in this interview uh, in aerospace engineering and hopefully inspire folks out there, especially Latinas and women in engineering to go ahead and study this beautiful major. I totally agree. Aerospace engineering is a career that will never cease to amaze me. So let's learn a little bit about you now. Yeah, so I'm Natalie Quintero. I studied aerospace engineering at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University here in Daytona Beach, Florida. I recently actually finished my master's in systems engineering at Cornell University when I was uh, working. I work at the Boeing company as a systems engineer for NASA's SLS rocket, which stands for Space Launch System. This rocket actually is part of NASA's Artemis mission to go back to the moon and onto Mars. I'm originally from Caracas, Venezuela, and the reason why I decided to come to America was because this is the land of opportunities. There's so many opportunities and industry here to develop into aerospace that that was one of my true passions since I was a little girl. Wow, Natalie, that is so inspirational that you're living out the dreams you've had since you were a child. Now, can you tell us about the coolest day you've had as an aerospace engineer? So while I was in college, I was involved with different student projects. And one of my favorite ones was participating along with Duke University, actually, um, with the NASA's microgravity flight program. So this was a, a program that NASA had out of Houston, Texas, as part of Johnson Space Center where universities across the country, roughly 14 universities, participated and tested an experiment in microgravity. We decided to test how the cornea behaved in microgravity. For this, we utilized pig eyes. Believe it or not, uh, they're the most similar to human eyes. So we decided to test the whole equipment, put it in an airplane, and up we go for roughly two hours along the bay there in Texas. It was so excited to go there and, and the first time we went up in the parabola and we're up there and everybody looks at each other and we're all floating. That was like amazing. Like it really felt like I was an astronaut and it really made me fall in love more with aerospace. Okay, I don't know about you all, but that project sounds like a once in a lifetime experience. And after a lot of convincing, I've got a Natalie to send us some secret footage from the Vomit Comet. Check it out. Wow! I think I'll need to catch a ride on the Vomit Comet myself. Although, I'm afraid of roller coasters, so I might have to think through that a little bit more. Alright Natalie, is there an experience you'd like to talk to us about from your professional job? So as a professional, thanks to my, my job, I was able to go for um, short through, around three weeks to New Orleans. That's where we have our assembly facility called MAF, Michoud Assembly Facility. That's where we're currently building uh, the EM-2 rocket. But um, about two years ago, I was afforded the opportunity to go there. And my first time walking into the rocket factory, I saw this huge liquid hydrogen tank. And I was going to work on the engine section along with a couple of uh, more senior engineers. And it was really exciting to have that 101 uh, with engineers teaching you the ways they did it back in the space shuttle program and then just seeing flight hardware. I think that's one of the coolest things because eventually when the rocket comes to Florida, we'll be able to see that launch into space. Awesome. That sounds like a great time. So now let's get back to the basics. Can you please tell us what types of products aerospace engineers can work on? So as aerospace engineers, we can work on anything really that can fly. We can work on airplanes. It can be a commercial airplane like I, what I have here, 
or you can work on fighter jets, so smaller aircraft that go at way higher speeds of sound. You can work on rockets. Obviously, this is a smaller model, but there's rockets that can take uh, satellites to space or astronauts to the ISS as well. You can work on the actual capsule that will be taking astronauts to space. Uh, as well, we, you can work on rotorcraft, on helicopters. They're very used, um, are either on commercial for tours or you can work on bigger helicopters that are used for military uses. And most recently in the industry, drones have become a really popular thing um, to, to endeavor into. Many companies are using drones to even deliver your products that you would order on Amazon. And you can use it for your personal use or, or even to, to play around. So this is another quadrupter um, drone that you, know, you can have at home and experiment with it and learn the basic things of flying. Thank you for that demonstration, Natalie. Now, can you tell us what roles aerospace engineers can have in the field? So all the different products you saw, there's many different roles that you can develop in each of them. So you can be a structures or stress analyst. You can actually design parts or, or different elements in the product. You can work as a manufacturing engineer um, in the shop floor with the mechanics and technicians. You can also work as a systems engineer where you integrate different systems that are part of, let's say like in an airplane, you have the wing, the fuselage, empennage, and so forth. Uh, you can also work in operations. So those are the people that are operating a specific system or a whole product. Like in my team, we work on operating and launching the rocket. And uh, you can also work as a test engineer. So those are the people that actually test the different subsystems and see that they're working correctly as designed. Okay, I think that definitely helps people better understand where they would be or where they would fit best as an aerospace engineer. All right, now for this next question, I know you have to think a few years back, but can you please tell us about your first experience as an aerospace engineer? So my first experience as an aerospace engineer was actually when I was a student. I went all the way from Florida to Washington, specifically to Seattle, Washington, to intern at Boeing's Everett facility. This is where Boeing keeps all and manufactures all their airplanes that you'll see flying around the world. As an intern, it was really more than what I ex had expected uh, in the field. And I was really excited to see, you know, how they actually get built and right in front of my eyes, airplanes that I would normally fly into. I saw how they put together the different parts, the wings, and just the whole process itself reassured me that I really wanted to be in this field and in this industry. Wow, that sounds like a great way to start a career. I definitely think that landing an internship is key to the collegiate experience. Now, can you tell us about your favorite part of the current role you're in? So my favorite part of the job, uh, I currently work in the operations and launch team for the NASA's SLS program, is actually working in a rocket that will be taking humans again to the moon and the first woman, that's why it's named Artemis, and actual humans onto Mars is the, is the fact that we're working on projects that will take humanity into deeper space. So I actually work on the SLS rocket too, and I couldn't agree with Natalie more. I think the coolest part about this job is the fact that we get to work on this vehicle. So I see where the passion comes from. So I know a lot of people think you have a cool job, Natalie, but what does a typical workday look like for you? So a typical day for me as a systems engineer and operations for the SLS rocket, it varies. I work on test and launch procedures. I also work on developing displays that our engineers will be using during the day of launch. And I'm also part of the planning for integrated testing. So once we have the vehicle joining here at Kennedy Space Center and we join them with all the different parts developed for other companies, then we'll be able to see how the vehicle behaves and if it's good to go for launch. As well, I lead meetings with our customers and internal with other engineers that I work with. Okay, now I'm sure a lot of people are wondering about the lifestyle aspect of your career. Do you feel your job is flexible? So my job is actually flexible and allows me to actually be involved with diversity organizations within the company and be involved with the STEM outreach in our community. So I really like that 
about my job and many companies offer that possibility as long as you communicate uh, with your management and, and the company itself. Great, thank you for sharing that Natalie. Now I'm sure people are wondering what type of skills you really need to be an aerospace engineer. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? So some of the skills is in aerospace engineering, you should have both technical and soft skills. As technicals, I would recommend having a good base in STEM fields. If you endeavor into aerospace, you'll see aerodynamics, you'll see aerospace structures and see how, how to design those things. But also important to know how to problem solve so if you're presented a problem, how, how, how are you going to fix it, you know? This is where you go back to your basics that you learned in school and apply it into the real world. And critical thinking is very important. As part of the soft skills that uh, somebody should have uh, as an aerospace engineer is learning how to present that technical data to both technical community and non-technical community. Many times you'll be in front of management and senior directors that might not know all the little details of the technicalities and it's your job to present what your findings might be or, or how to solve the problem in a more understandable way. So I think those are key things to have as an aerospace engineer. All right, you all heard her. Time to get to work on those skills. Okay, Natalie, now for this next question, it's a little bit more personal, but we wanna know why you chose this career. I chose uh, aerospace engineering because since I was a little girl, I had many influences from my dad actually, who was a pilot, and that in, in introduced me to what aviation was. When I was looking in high school what to study, I, you know, mechanical engineering was a well-known engineering in where I was from, but I wanted to see, is there anything that joins aviation and engineering? And I discovered that aerospace engineering actually did that. So. I decided this is what I want to do and decided to apply for universities here in America and, and I ended up at Embry-Riddle, which is uh, world number one in undergraduate for aerospace engineering and I really enjoyed my undergrad years there and the opportunities afforded there. Everybody at school was really in love with aviation. We're really close to um, the Daytona Beach Airport. So you would see airplanes fly all the time up in the sky. And what's particularly about the school that I went to is that uh, everybody's connected with aviation. You either do business or engineering or human factors um, that we all love aerospace. That's so interesting to hear because my influence growing up and what led me to become an engineer was also my dad. So kudos to our dads. So for this next question, we want to know how your background and being a Latina in a male dominated field has helped you thrive in this environment. As a Latina in aerospace, what has allowed me to thrive is actually being passionate about my goals and, and what I wanted to do. I wanted to be in a space program and that's actually what I'm working on now. The other thing is learning to be adaptable. So I was able to adapt to my environment and learn from those that came before me and had so much experience in, let's say, in the space shuttle program, and then I learned from them. And then the other thing is me bringing my diversity into the team was very important, being my authentic self. I came from Venezuela into America, and actually my first language is Spanish, so I was able to, to bring my bilingual self into the team and, and show a different way of thinking and, and different experiences that allowed me to be who I am today. Wow, I honestly just love that answer. I think being your authentic self is the greatest thing you can bring to a table. You go, Natalie. Okay, now for our last and final question. Do you have any advice for those who want to become aerospace engineers in the future? So if you want to become an aerospace engineer, one thing that I would recommend is do not be intimidated by the name of the major. You know, anybody, any of us can become aerospace engineers if we put all the effort and, and echarle ganas that you can on, on this major. I would recommend though, while, while you're in high school, to take classes in math and physics just to get you a little bit introduced, you know, if you like the STEM fields. This is very important because a lot of the classes you'll take in your degree, like aerodynamics, structures, solids, fluids, are based in physics and math. So liking the basis will ensure you to have a very successful future. I'm not saying all classes are going to be easy. There's going to be classes you're going to like more and classes that you don't like as much. 
But that's just part of discovering what you like because as I mentioned before, there's many roles that you can do as an aerospace engineer. And then the last thing, do not give up. You know, always strive for what you want. You know, if you can dream it, you can do it. So let's let's do it and, and pursue your dreams. Thank you so much, Alexandra, for having me here at the Feminist Network. I hope my story inspires women out there, Latinas, and anybody that wants to join the aerospace industry. Thank you. Everything you shared with us today has been so powerful and empowering, Natalie. I'm definitely proud to have a friend like you in the Steminist Network. All the useful information and all the experiences you shared, I'm sure will inspire the future of aerospace. So thank you and we appreciate you taking some time to talk to us today. Now, if you enjoyed Natalie's interview, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the Steminist Network for more STEM related content. Thank you for watching.